Today, we're gonna talk about financial literacy. There's a big buzzword about financial literacy. And typically, when you come to financial literacy, you will see stocks, bonds, dividend stocks, passive income, or some other tactic to make you financially literate. Assets over liabilities. And I've seen a great deal of conversations. I've seen a lot of talk about being financially literate. Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. But this is where things start to come apart. On this channel, I have done exposés. I've gone to an investment calculator and shown you the inputs of 100, 250, 300 bucks over a 20, 30 year period. And there's the topical knowledge of knowing that if you invest money into these financial devices diligently and consistently, um, you should be rich, right? Well, not necessarily, because as much as I hear about financial literacy, I hear a lot of circular talk about financial literacy, and I don't see the application of sound, true financial principles. Number one, very few of these people ever talk about starting a business or starting a business would become an afterthought. Well, when you go look at the Forbes richest people, they all own businesses. They're not investors. They didn't make their money in the stock market. They are business owners. Go down the list, you will see that these people own businesses. But for some reason, business ownership is kind of a tail end of the conversation talking about financial literacy. Because let me go ahead and give you some examples of things I do in my life that I feel make me financially literate. Number one, I don't spend more money than I make. Number two, even though I am a millionaire, I have a budget. Number three, I do not use my personal credit cards. I use business credit cards. Number four, I only use credit after the business is up, running, and cash flowing. I do not use a credit, and I'm gonna explain to you why. When you use credit, Give you an example let's say you go out and get yourself an investment property and you go out and get a mortgage and then you use a credit card for the down payment you're going to struggle to pay your financial obligations because the rent of this house would be barely enough barely enough to pay back the money that you use to get the house that's what i call thin operating profits. And I distinctly try to my best to stay away from thinly operating profit businesses. I was in the car rental business for a hot six months. And from a cost benefit analysis, it's in a very expensive business to run. Number one, you gotta secure a car to rent. And rents, compared to the cost of the car, are not really that good. They're just not that good. And I, I, I see all this talk about financial literacy, and I see the number of people who get into these businesses and they fail to pull out a calculator and crunch the numbers. So if you're financially literate, the first thing you're gonna do before you approach anything is crunch the numbers. Car rental business, I ran what's called projections. I ran phantom theoretical numbers because they weren't real numbers. And once I got in the car rental business and I started to get real numbers, it got very, very depressing. So you have a whole bunch of people who talk about financial literacy, financial literacy, and financial literacy is going to save people. I got a question for you. How many of us know that there is a ton of information online on how to lose weight? How many of us know this? It's literally in every corner of the internet, yet the population continues to get fatter. So just because this knowledge is out there, 
doesn't mean that people will apply the knowledge to the situation. This is where, in my opinion, the financial literacy scam, in my opinion, it's a scam falls apart. Instead of teaching people how to create income, it's these tactics, strategies, and scams on how to manipulate the income that you have to get the results, the desired results that you want in your life. And velocity banking, buy, oh, here's a big one, buying a whole life insurance policy and borrowing against the cash value. You know how long you have to hold a whole life insurance policy before you get enough cash values built up where you can, we're talking 10, 15 years. I've literally seen a number of people with you can become your own bank. <sighs> okay. The way that I understand financial literacy is that you must come to the table with what's something that's called disposable income. Now what is disposable income? This is income that is above and beyond what you need to live on. If you do not have ample, I mean ample disposable income, I'm gonna give you numbers, it's gonna be very hard for you to participate in the asset over liabilities conversation. I know someone, good, good friend, who never really got into the entrepreneurial world. However, I was in the military with this guy, his name is George, and George had an amazing ability to save up money. When George got out the military, he had $90,000 in the bank. This is money that he saved. And as George went on throughout his life, he was able to buy cars, cash, huge, huge down payments down on this house. And from what I understand about George, he's never had any financial stress. I feel that George, because number one, what did I tell you? Number one, you gotta live within your income. Number two, and then George was making a lot of money. So I understand and know that George is financially literate because his financial literacy extends upon knowledge and moves to application. And this is where most people run into problems, a lot of problems. They cannot take the knowledge and apply it to their real life. At the moment, credit card debt is at an all time high. The average car payment is $700 per month. We're talking about a Corolla. And right now, the average American doesn't have the ability to manage money properly. And that's where this whole financial literacy scam falls apart because sure, everyone knows that if you invest money in the stock market for 30 or 40 years, talk about that in a minute, that you should have a pretty significant sum in the market. How many of you have been able to work your job with no interruptions, no layoffs, no illnesses, nothing. You just steadily and consistently work your job with none of these issues happening into your life. Let's see, when I first started on YouTube, uh, I don't think I've really shared the story. I was in the hospital for a week, bleeding ulcers and some other stuff. And I had a heart attack 2019, was in the hospital for four weeks, literally took me six months to get back to somewhat normal. And then there was little hiccups. So for the average person, and this was, this was the, both of these events happened in a, about an 11 year period. So to take the average person with the average income and say that this person is going to be able to diligently and consistently invest in the markets, I feel is foolish, unreasonable, and it's not gonna happen. It's just simply not gonna happen. But this is the things that you see and hear in these financial literacy streets. Because I understand knowledge is important. Knowledge is very critical, but I'll tell you a story. I was watching a video by Lewis Howes on how to pre-sell some stuff. The video was an hour long. I had to watch that video 10 times to get all of the essence of that video. And then I would watch it and I would try to do it. And I would watch it and I would try to do it. And I would watch it and I would try to do it. If you're talking about financial literacy and your financial literacy stops at knowledge, 
and doesn't move to the application stage, you're pretty much fooling yourself. You're pretty much setting yourself up for failure because once again, there is a cult around financial literacy and passive income. Let's talk about passive income. The average person doesn't have enough disposable income to buy assets that are gonna spend off passive income. They just don't have the money, but you will see it at every twist and turn, assets over liabilities, get yourself some passive income. And when I speak to passive income, and let me be really, really clear. Um, if you go out and buy some dividend stock, let's say you go out and buy $1,000 worth of dividend stock, and that dividend stock pays you 20 bucks a year in passive income. That is valid and true passive income. And this is where I start to get more precise with my language. When I speak of passive income, I'm talking about meaningful passive income, the type of passive income that will pay your bills, the type of passive income that will buy houses. And for me to go on and rant and rave about passive income, for me in my situation, I would need about a million a year in passive income for me to actually you know, make it worthwhile for me. I don't need an extra $20, I don't need an extra 30, I don't need an extra 100, I don't even need an extra 1,000. If we're going to get into a meaningful conversation conversation about passive income, we're going to talk about meaningful passive income, not chump change. Because, you know, one of the things that when I talk about money and money is very emotional for a lot of people, money is very, very close to the heart that when I like, you know, put out have you done X, Y, and Z? Please send receipts to glendon at savagefinance.org. I never get what I'm looking for. I get screenshots. I never get bona fide proof. Never get it because these guys do not have a true understanding of what passive income is truly is. In my life, I've had moments of passive income. In my life, I've had periods of passive income. And this is the thing, because they were not durable, such as if I went ahead and took, let's say 10 million bucks, $10 million and bought $10 million worth of dividend stock, I would be looking at about a mil a year, I would assume, or maybe 750. I don't have the precise calculations because I haven't run the numbers on that. But that's where I would need to be in that rim, in that frame and talking about passive income. And that's just me because of the lifestyle that I wanna live. But for the average person, and I've crunched the numbers, and I've crunched the numbers, and I've crunched the numbers, and I've crunched the numbers. The average person does not have enough disposable income to create durable, meaningful, passive income. And this is what I'm talking about. Sure, you may know everything about cryptocurrency. You may know about cryptocurrency wallets. You may know about cryptocurrency exchanges. You may know about cryptocurrency uh, pancake swaps. You may be well-versed in that. And I've literally had people who come on the channel who are really well-versed and they don't have any meaningful money. Because even in the wild, wild world of cryptocurrency, you still need to have that thing called disposable capital. It doesn't change. There was a guy, a young guy on Wall Street Bets who made 120 million on Bed Bath and Beyond. But guess what? Guess what he started with? He started with 25 million. He did not, he, which he got from friends and family which should tell you a lot about his friends, his network. His network has money, his network's got money. But once again, financial literacy without the application is pretty much worthless in my opinion. It's pretty much garbage. It's pretty much trash in my opinion. So if you want to build some durable, substantial, passive income, this is the thing you need to do. I have a link below with some courses that teach you how to start a business. When you start a business, you have to become financially literate because if you don't know how to manage your money, if you don't know how to manage 
the business money or your personal money, that's gonna be extremely hard for you to be successful. I'll tell you a little story. I had a friend, young guy, who started a really good business, but his business was making 100K a month. He was spending 150K. Had a Lambo, had the G-Wagon, had a, a drawer full of Rolexes, and he was always taking trips. He was never home. And then one day, I noticed that I reached out to him. He's very, very stressed out. He's like, man, we're, we're about a week or two from shutting down because we don't have enough money to run the business. I said, what do you mean? Your business makes plenty of money. He says, I know, but I've been spending quite a bit. And when he told me what he was spending and what he was spending it on, once again, starting a business and making a lot of money with bad money management habits is not going to save you. It's just going to give you a bigger shovel to dig a bigger hole. So I've got some stuff down there. I'm going to get into some workshops. So I'll be talking about that in upcoming videos. But once again, the way that financial literacy is put out today, it is part and parcel of a scam. And it's not something that's going to help you achieve financial freedom, which is another buzzword. I have achieved financial freedom, the ability to live my life without working because I started a business. And a lot of folks who are talking about financial freedom, if you look closely, you will see that they also have a business. So don't listen to what they tell you, do exactly what they're doing. So I've got some stuff for you below in the first comment, check it out. And I will see you guys in the next one.